record. All right, here we go. Week six. Is this week six? Um, all right, so we'll, we're going to do same sort of deal as before. This week, we're going to do demos and then retro this week. And then um, we'll assign issues for the last week. Um, or I guess not the last week, but the last issue that we have. <laughs> um, all right, so for demos, what were the pairs? It was Nina and Nisha, right? Nina and Nisha, and then Jeff and Jenna. Yeah. Who wants I, to go first? Um, I guess I I can go. Sweet, let's do it. Um, yeah, let me. Okay, there's the button. All right. Um, so for our ticket, we needed to implement a button that would allow the user the option to delete an item from their shopping list. And when they click on it, a dialog should open up here that asks if they really want to remove it from their list. And in the message, it specifies which item it is so that they wouldn't be clicking on the wrong item by mistake and deleting it by mistake. And if you confirm that you do want it removed, then it will be removed from your list and um, it will be rendered accordingly. Yeah, that's all we have. Yay. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> nice. Thank Was there you. anything that you wanted to talk through um, for the code side of things, like anything that you learned or would be helpful um, for other folks to know? Yeah, so on the ticket, you guys specified what to use in order to trigger that dialog window, um, that pop-up. I thought it was pretty cool because I've never used it before. And I think it was new for Jeff too. Nice. Uh, with the pop-up was new, the alert? Um, I don't remember. Okay. Jeff, do you remember? It was like window dot something. Window dot confirm. Mm. Yeah. Oh. No, that confirm that was your um that was your pop-up? Yeah. Was it was it just alert? No, it was um confirm pop-up. Oh. Yeah. So if you were to click cancel, then the item would just stay put. Cool. Nice. Sweet. Thanks for demoing. Uh Nina awesome. and Nisha. I can show my screen. <clears throat> okay. You can see my screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what we were to do this week was to create an indicator to signal whether the items were um technically like do soon, kind of soon, or they were do not soon or inactive and then have them in different categories. And then also order them um, alphabetically. So as you can see here, all the items are alphabetically um, displayed and they are displayed alphabetically inside of their own like category. So here, for example, you have cheese. That's all the kind of soon category is displayed alphabetically. All the inactive category is displayed alphabetically and they're all sorted that way. Um, one of the stretch goals that we had was to create this like overdue section that would show if the item were past the next um, planned date purchase. Um, but had not been, hadn't reached yet the inactive um, category. So to display it all the way at the top and then as overdue. So that's how we did it. That's what it looks like. Um, let's see, in terms of the code, there was, it was interesting when we had the acceptance criteria because it says sorts inactive item last, then in ascending order, depending on which category it is, and then um, saw the item alphabetically. But what we ended up doing was 
we just sorted them um, alphabetically first, and then we sorted them by the category that they were in. Um, Cause it was the, the way that it reads here on the description um, reads in terms of like, you want to first them into their individual boxes and then inside of the box sorts alphabetically. And like, that's an extra layer of complexity. Whereas if we just sort everything alphabetically first and then sorts group them all together, it gives the same output. Um, but it requires a lot less logic behind it. Um, and then we had each category in terms of like urgency levels. So like one through four and then overdue is zero. So it goes all the way to the top of, of the list. So that's, uh, that's everything. Nice. Well done. Sweet. Um, Just so yeah, go for it. Sorry, I, I didn't re review in the code, but just looking at the demos, I just have two notes. Uh, one is the confirmed dialog. Yeah, you say, hey, you want to delete apples? This is awesome. But it might be useful to like have the thing that you're deleting quotes. It's like the rest of this, the dialog is like from the system, but we know this is the thing you actually want to delete. So they don't lose it in, in, in the dialog. Um, that's one, one thing to say. Uh, and then other one was... Oh, uh, with the urgencies, uh, it would be nice to put those into constants. So one is whatever, as opposed to like just hard coding with a magic string of zero to four. So in the code, you, you don't have to like look through it. You just say, oh, not urgent. You know exactly what that is in the code. This is just my, my notes. Yeah, thank you. Nice. Thanks for those suggestions. Good tips. Um, okay, so up next, we've got Retro. So let me share the link in the Zoom one more time. Um, it's also in the Slack in case we lose it. Um, doo -doo -doo. I guess I'll share my screen real quick too. So same sort of deal as before. I switch up the column names a little bit. Um, let's see. Am I sharing the right screen? Do you see the retro board? Do you see? Okay, cool. 50-50 <laughs> uh, shot. Um, okay, so in the columns, we'll fill out any shout outs that you want to give to each other. Um, and then you can talk about things that you liked about this past sprint, the last two weeks, uh, things that you learned. And then longed for is like a nicer way than saying like disliked, I guess, of like if there's anything that you wish that we would have done uh, or things that you think it would be cool to try out in this last sprint that we've got ahead of us. Um, oh, one other thing that I like to do at the start of Retro is just read out this prime directive to get everybody in the right headspace. Uh, so regardless of what we discover, we understand and truly believe that everyone did the best job they could given what they knew at the time, their skills and abilities, the resources available and the situation at hand. So just keep that in mind as you're writing stuff. Um, yeah, any questions before we get started? M mentors don't portray anything here, right? I assume. Um, You can. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, I feel like if there's any stuff that you liked or shout outs that you want to give. Um yeah, I don't I don't think you're <laughs> not supposed to participate. Um okay, so I'll set a timer for seven minutes and then we'll see how we're feeling as it goes.
Okay, so that's what seven minutes feels like. Um, okay, cool. So not a ton of topics on the board, but we can go ahead and vote anyway. Um, everybody should have five votes, I think. Um, so go ahead and take a moment and throw some thumbs up on any topics that you want to talk through uh, with the group. All right, cool. So now let's see, I'm gonna sort these by number of votes. Actually here, let me share my screen again. Mm -hmm. All right, so Let's see, we've got two, five. So let's see, let's start with the shout outs one. Does anybody wanna talk more, more about that? Yeah, I'll make this bigger. Oh, Jason, you're muted if you're talking. We definitely need a dice to like roll and just like I know. people. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I don't know if there's anything. There's like a bunch of features in here that I don't know what they do, but. Um, all right, if nobody wants to say anything to that one, I'll just read it out to our team for being supportive when any issues arose. Good job, everybody. And then the next one with five, uh, five votes. Our team Slack channel was pretty quiet this week, checking in to see how things are going. Um, so I, I can speak to this one. I wrote this one on here. Um, but yeah, I, I know that sometimes like the Slack being quiet means that everything's going well, but sometimes it can mean like that people aren't sure what to ask or like are feeling like they don't want to ask in a public channel. Uh, so I just wanted to sort of get a pulse check on how you all are feeling uh, and how things are going. And it's okay if they're not going well. I know there's been uh, folks have had stuff going on, like outside of Collab Lab, and that and that happens. Um, but yeah, just wanted to like make space for anybody to share anything. Do you all want to talk in the Slack channel more? Like, is that something that you are interested in at all? Or is it like, ah, oh, we don't need that? I'll speak for me. Like, um, this week was, um, Nisha and I kind of finished the issue like early on in the week. So it was like, oh, we're done. And then I kind of focused on like the, application for Airbnb Connect. So that's kind of where the rest, that was kind of why I was like quiet the rest, <laughs> the rest of the week. So yeah, that's, okay. yeah. For me, nice. it was because everything was going well. <laughs> good, good, good. Nice. What about other folks?
All right. Uh, let's see. Next up, we've got a bunch of twos. So let's go back to shout outs again. Peer code reviews were on the money this week. Awesome to hear. It sounds like those have been going well. Does anybody have uh, any more context that they want to add to this? Or anybody want to shout out something in particular that you liked about? Like what about code reviews went well? I like the, the comments that were made um, on our um, PR because there was those were things that we um, overlooked. I think one of the issue was that our conditional wasn't set up properly. So the item did not classify the way that they needed to be. Mm. So I appreciate like the other pair kind of um, catching that because we didn't even test so like putting a new item and see what happens um so yeah that was that was pretty cool yeah nice there we go that's why we validate <laughs> that's awesome sweet we can move on to the next column uh i'll group these two together because they're kind of related but uh, folks liked our team's friendliness and collaboration and that our peers are supportive and encouraging uh, anybody want to speak to either of those Sorry, it's, I haven't been talking because it's kind of noisy, but um, I just want to give a shout out to Nina. I think last week we kind of saw how nervous I was to take on that issue, but uh, Nina was very supportive, um, very helpful, like, and made it really nice to go through that issue. Um, and I'm glad I, that we took it on because um, it's always good to take on a new challenge and get to learn new things. So thank you. Yay. Love it. I find that like pairing on a pairing on a scary issue is always not as bad as like working on it alone. So good to good to hear that it went well. And thanks to Nisha for stepping out of your comfort zone and like being willing to take that on because I know that's that can be scary and it's and it's hard to do. But she did it. Uh, all right. Next one in the learned column. When using mob programming, it only works seamlessly if the navigator does not code at the same time. Otherwise, switching seats can be a hassle. This one, this is interesting. Can somebody speak more about like what what happened? Like which pair did this happen to? <laughs> it happened to us. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> um, because so if you're coding at the same time that like the other person is are driving whenever you try to pull the branch it's not going to pull all of the info so it's like you have to do a git stash you have to like figure out like it took us like a while to figure out what was going on and then it was like oh well if the navigator is not coding at all like touching or making changes to the branch at the same time then the transition is completely seamless but if you're coding then it's like where is your information going and all that so i mean it's not like you can't code, but it's more so if you're coding, probably code on a different branch, <laughs> mm -hmm. just so that like the switch is like easier. But yeah, yeah. So were you running into like merge conflicts or? Yes, not necessarily merge conflicts, but it it would like pull the latest data, but not update the screen or like the actual files. Oh, weird. So, like you did like the git stash. Okay. Um, yeah. So. That's and it was the the changes at the beginning were like small enough that we wouldn't notice that that was happening, and so yeah, like it was like, well, I I saw you typing this, and it's now on my <laughs> screen, so <laughs> like yeah, so that that was like a thing that that happened, but it was it's good to know that you know that's one of the kind of limitations. Like I wish there was a setting that would say you know discard any changes that I made while I was not like the driver. That would be like a lot easier because then you can do whatever you want knowing that it's not going to be saved anywhere and then whenever you're pulling it it just erases everything it just keeps the copy that both people worked on mm. but it doesn't seem to be that way or we haven't set it up to be that way yet so yeah okay fun yeah. with fun with tools <laughs> uh let's see anything anything else about that one that you wanted to add nisha or we can move on to the next one Okay, next, let's see, that's two. 
Okay, this one, I actually added this one too. Would it be helpful for code reviews, mentor code reviews to happen on Thursday instead of Friday so that you all have like a little bit more buffer time to merge PRs uh, before this meeting? You know, it's a little late in the game. You can just do like thumbs up, thumbs down. Like, would that be helpful or no? For for me, I, I think it would be helpful. And also I think the biggest thing is that um, we don't get notified whenever someone posts the comments or approves and they say you're the person Ooh. that created the PR. So either like doing it a little bit early, but at, like if every time that you're, you've reviewed it, then you just say like, hey, I reviewed so that way both pairs can, mm. both people on the pair can know, oh yeah, that, that was done. I think that was the okay. biggest, biggest thing because that was, I was waiting for the notification and all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it never came through. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's interesting because I, I guess I assumed that it would have. Um... I, I think it does. Well, it sends, I think it sends it to whoever creates the, the PR, but not mm. to everyone that worked on it. Okay. So yeah, like, that's good to know. Yeah. Either um, like mentioning the person or sending in the slack either or be okay yeah 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 let me add that at the person or okay sweet yeah that is helpful feedback and something we can totally do um let's see so those were all the twos so one liked that this week's issue was complex enough to be exciting, but manageable enough that it didn't make us pull our hair out. Love that. <laughs> Anybody want to speak to that a little bit more? Which pair, which pair was that? Was that? <clears throat> okay. Nice. Well, then I guess you, you two already touched on that a little bit. Um, so we can move on to the last one. Sometimes the way a problem makes the most sense to humans isn't the way to explain it to computers. Is this related to the sorting piece? Okay. Nice. Sweet. Well, well done, everybody. Was there anything no. else that anybody wanted to <clears throat> add or talk through? Anything that's not on the board? Any like lessons that we want to take into the next sprint or things that we want to do differently? Mix it up a little bit. I would say there's nothing better than a problem that's just hard enough. Like it's almost too hard, but not too hard. There's nothing better. There's nothing better right? to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's like right Personal. in your, what do they call it? It's like your growth zone where it's yeah. like just outside your comfort zone. And like you can almost see it, but not quite. And you start hacking away and like, that's awesome. Yeah, I still totally. We love to see it. <laughs> Sweet. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for that. Um, let's see. We can swap over to issues now. So let's see. Pairs for this week. We are here. Okay. Um, so Jenna and Nina and Jeff and Nisha. Let's see if I can remember that. Well, I guess I only have to remember one. So Jenna and Nina. <laughs> Jenna and Nina are together. Um, okay, so we've done, let's see, we got to tidy these up, but we can do that once the PRs are merged. I think that'll take care of closing these two issues. So the last one, this week is a little bit different. Um, so we are doing a sort of like UI overhaul, I guess, of the ticket or of the app. Um, so this is going to be a little bit more freeform than it has been in the past. So you'll still be working in your pairs, but you'll also have to work as a team to decide like what you want your finished app to look like. Uh, Cause right now we've got a lot of functionality built in, but there's no sort of pizzazz or like styles. Um, so this is your chance to decide what kind of vibe do you want your app to have? What do you want it to look like? Uh, and then, start working towards making some of those changes. Um, so it's gonna be a little bit more freeform. So you'll have to decide what you want the design to look like. And then you'll have to decide like how you're gonna divvy up that work between the two of you or the four of you. 
uh, between the two pairs. Um, and then, yeah, and then <laughs> the mentors will be surprised when you come back on Saturday to see like what it looks like. Um, but you know, we're always around for if you have any questions or you need any help designing stuff. Um, so there's no, there's no like divvying up to do, I guess we're just all, all on this. Uh, let's see. So Jenna. And oh, this is really open, open-ended. Hey. Yeah. It's wow. super, it, so it, it lets you practice the sort of project management piece a little bit, uh, or I guess is that product management? I can never keep them straight. Product, I think. Products. Yeah. <laughs> deciding what it looks like. And then Misha. Like, like project when it's like one, like consultancies do projects. And then SaaS mm. companies do products. Okay. Yeah. Fun times. Um, so yeah, if one of you wants to take the lead on scheduling a time for all four of you to get together and chat, um, or I guess we're all here so the mentors could dip out and then let you all use this <laughs> same Zoom to chat. Or actually, I don't know what the recording will do for that but whatever you could you could like make a new zoom now to do to do this or you could meet up um you know tomorrow or another day to figure out what you want it to look like oh, this but, is a gigantic <laughs> yeah it's it's a lot of <laughs> ideas so you don't have to do all of these things but it's like this is if you want some more guidance on how to decide what this app should look like this has some ideas of like coming up with some words to inspire you and then making a mood board of other designs that you like. Um, so you can kind of go as deep or as shallow with it as you want. Um, any questions on what the goal of this is? I know it's a little bit more wishy-washy than some of the other tickets so far. This is like real life. That's what this is. It is. It is. <laughs> it's like now go off and build whatever you want. But usually so. it's like, make it look better. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> Okay. Well, if there's no questions, who wants to take the lead on uh, scheduling the Zoom just to make sure that somebody's the owner of that? I liked the idea of uh, using the remaining time if everybody's okay. available. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I can stop the recording and then just let you all use this Zoom. Do you all have, is everybody free after this for the next, I don't know how long it will take, but at least the next 20 minutes you've got. If is anybody not, not free? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thumbs up if you can stay. Uh, I can only stay for like 10 minutes. Okay. All right, cool. Well, then we'll wrap this up and then let you all get to doing the thing. Yeah. Okay. All right. How do I stop? Let's see, stop share, and then we'll stop recording. <laughs>